Yeah, inside, inside the last 60 minutes of the Sports Max Zone now, the United States of America and Trinidad and Tobago also had their trials at the weekend in national track and field. Let's deal with the U.S. trials where Sydney McLaughlin broke her own 400-meter hurdles world record. The 22-year-old sped to 51.41 seconds, lowering the previous record of 51.46, which she set while winning the Tokyo Olympics Games title last year. There was also the matter of Shakira Richardson failing to make the team either 100 or 200 meters. She failed to get by the first round of the 100 and exited at the semi-final stage of the 200 meters. Leighton Levy is still with us. Um, Leighton, let's start with uh, Sydney McLaughlin. Um, <laughs> absolutely outstanding. And, uh, you know, if it weren't for the exploits of one Elaine Thompson hero last year, uh, there may have been more accolades on a global or an awards basis for McLaughlin on her 2021 efforts. Absolutely, right. When you consider that she's gone under 52 seconds now four times, including three world records. And when you watch that race on Saturday, she wasn't even breathing hard. I think she's going to do things in this event in the next few years that we never dreamed of before. I mean, there are women out there who are struggling to one, run 51-4 on a flat 400. And she's doing it with, you know, with 10 hurdles that to, to navigate. She's just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think we've run out of superlatives now to describe Sydney McLaughlin. She's just otherworldly. Yeah. And of course, it's a lot easier to predict, predict what happens in a 400 hurdles than the sprint hurdles because um, it is easier to correct an, er an error in a 400 hurdles than it is for the sprint hurdles. I say that to suggest that she should be a shoe in for the U Eugene Oregon gold. I don't think there's anybody who can stop her. I think the only way she can lose is if she falls twice. <laughs> falls twice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Shakira Richardson seems to be falling a lot more than twice. Um, how surprising was her uh, failure over the weekend, both in the 100 and 200 sprints? I, I, I kind of expected her to make the U.S. team, so I'm a little bit stunned that she didn't get out of the first round. 11.31, just two weeks after she ran 10.85, tells you that there's a lot going on with this young lady that we really don't know, because to, to run 11.31 and run come fifth in your preliminary round heat, that's not Shakara Richardson. This is a girl who's run 1072, 1075. You know, last year at the US Championships, we saw her run 1064, albeit windated in, in the semifinals. 1131 is not supposed to be something that she runs into a major championship. But I think it goes back to what we had always been saying this season the lack of preparation in the early season, which I think has come back to haunt her. And we saw the same in the 200. I never expected her to make the team in the 200, sorry because of the depth of the U.S. in terms of that event. Mm. And the 100 was the more likely of the two events for her to make. But so not really surprised about what happened in the 222 policy was not going to take you anywhere, uh, given what we've seen from Abby Steiner and others. Um, but for the 100, yes, I was a bit surprised, but not really surprised because you, you, if you don't lay the groundwork for good performances, you're not going to eventually get them. You pay the price eventually. Yeah. And, and her quick criticism of the media, she uh, dodged interviews in the mix zone at one point, but eventually came to the um, mix zone and spoke pretty disparagingly of the, of the media. Your thoughts yeah, on she's that? Del she, she's delusional. She threatened to even sue people because they said that she didn't qualify for the, for the U.S. team. What is she, she going to sue them for? You know, she, she's living in a space right now where... The you know, reality, there's somewhere down the rabbit hole with Alice in Wonderland, and I, I don't know when she's going to come out of it. But I think she needs to get her house in order, unless she's going to actually eventually fade away yeah. as one of those that might have been but never fulfilled the potential. Yeah. I just think it's an embarrassment what she's been going. Yeah, and in 20 seconds before we leave the U.S., Fred Curley going 9-7 in the 100, and Noah Lyles with an impressive 200-meter run as well. How, how impressive were they? Very impressive. Curly, 976 in the semifinal, 977 in the final. I think he's a prohibitive favorite now for the, for the yeah. title in Oregon. And of course, Noah Lyles in his race with um, Arian Knighton, I think that was just experience over talent there because Knighton had that race in control, was in control of that race until very late. I think he just probably got a little bit excited about the fact that he was actually leading into the, the last few meters of that race and eventually kind of lost his composure, kind of like Brenna Williams in 100 meters on Saturday, on Saturday night. But I think he will learn from the experience, and I think the fire that we saw from him in that he lost 
is going to make him a genuine threat in Oregon. Yeah, uh, let's switch over to Trinidad and Tobago now, uh, Leighton, because Jareem Richards was the standout performer at the TNT trials held over three days at the Haisley Crawford Stadium. You remember he had won the World Indoor 400-meter title earlier mm -hmm. this year. He sped to a lifetime best, 19.83 seconds in the 200 meters, um, a stadium record, I gather. Uh, the 19.77 uh, is the only Trinidadian time faster. That was from Atto, Atto Bolden. Mm -hmm. Um, Jareem, pretty strong over 400, but obviously has the speed to run fast over 200 as well. But the 200 is his preferred event. And when I spoke to him prior to the start of the national championships in Trinidad, he said his, his main objective was to go below 20 seconds. Because as we've seen all year, 45 seconds flat for World Indoors in March told you that he was in great shape. And he did say that he was in the, probably the best shape of his life this year, training with Wade Van Nieker, who subsequently got injured. So he's, he's kind of out of contention this year. But he went into Trinidad pretty confident and pretty in pretty good shape. And I think it manifested itself in the fact that he ran in 0.3 win in driving rain and ran 19.83. It tells you what kind of shape he's in. And I think, I mean, notwithstanding anything, you know, we can't predict. I think he's probably our strong middle contender for Oregon because he's running with not just the form, but certainly the confidence of what, of what is required to get to that level of performance that will get you medals made a championship. Yeah, and, and there's a, a, a deep inspiration running through him as well, uh, Leighton, because of uh, his Lendor. Sport, uh, Dion Lendor, who died back in January. And every time he touches the track, Jerry Richards, he, he wants to pay tribute to Lendor. And uh, it, 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 appear, it, it appears to me that, you know, he, 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 he's being driven by, by that thought. Yeah, I did, because I asked him earlier this year whether or not he... Now that Lindor has passed, whether or not he would assume the mantle yes. of the face of Trader and Tobago's track and field. And he said it would be, would be his honor to do that because he would then be taking over from the, the, the man who he considered his best friend and, um, and an inspiration. So he's driven by a lot of these factors. And I think what, we're, what is manifesting for him is absolutely outstanding because he's used all of that negative energy and channel it in a very positive way. And it's nice to see him run really fast yeah. and run fast consistently. Okay, Leighton, we, we've got to leave it there. There was the Kishon Walcott meet record, 85-1-7 in the javelin as well, which we'll, we'll have time to talk about as he heads towards the Oregon World Championship in a couple of weeks. But thanks, Leighton. We'll, we'll talk again soon. Yeah, and take it easy, guys. Yeah, uh, Leighton, leave it there talking to us about, well, not only the Jamaica National Track and Field Trials, but the U.S. Trials and the TNT Trials as well. We go to break. Back with a wrap-up of The Zone after this. Thank you for watching SportsMax on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and to click the notification bell to stay informed.